If you've got a boring oak or pine tall boy in your house, this video will hopefully give you some inspiration about what you can do with the tall boy to completely transform it and make it unique. I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different with this tall boy, so let's jump into the video and see what I create. The first thing I'm gonna do is take the carbide scraper and use that to scrape the top layer of varnish and also this damage off the top of this table. Now, my carbide scraper is actually quite blunt at the moment. It's not very sharp and it's not working very well. I think I'm going to need to order a new blade because I've run out of blades and I'll just jump on Amazon and order some more blades. But in the meantime, instead of going really slowly, I'm just going to grab out my belt sander and rip the top layer of varnish off with that. Whenever you're sanding, you wanna make sure that you've got some minimum safety essentials. You're going to need to have at least a dust mask. You can also use a full dust respirator if you've got one of those. I do have one, but I tend to just like to use my dust mask just to do a quick job on the top of a unit. I also like to use earmuffs and safety glasses when I am sanding. When I'm using my belt sander, I actually like to only strip the top layer of varnish off. You don't wanna to strip too much off with a belt sander because a belt sander can be really quite coarse. I use an 80 grit on the belt sander to remove that top layer of varnish and you will find that it does leave some indents in the timber going along the grain of the timber. Make sure that you never belt sand the opposite direction is that's going to be very hard to then remove those lines. I'll grab the camera and I'll show you up close what those lines look like and what I'm talking about, where you'll be able to see the belt sander marks going this direction. I then grab my orbital sander and I'm going to sand out all of those marks to make a really smooth surface for that top of the timber. So here up close, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. If I bring the camera right down close, you'll be able to see all these little lines here. These lines are indents that have come from the belt sander and I'm going to need to sand those out. I'm just going to grab an 80 grit here and apply that to my sander. Now I wouldn't suggest you go much lower than the 80 grit. If you were to go to a 60 grit or a 40 grit, it would probably be a little bit too harsh. I like to use an 80 grit, then a 120 grit, and then a 240 grit to smooth out. I've just got my orbital sander here. Now this is a bit of a more professional grade orbital sander than some of the more basic beginner sanders. I have all of my tools linked down in the description always. So if you're wondering what sanders I'm using, you can check out down there. This is definitely not needed for somebody who's a beginner. You can start off with just a cheap orbital sander. You don't need something quite so powerful. It just saves a little bit of time when you're doing this on the regular. So this pine tall boy is actually going to make a fair bit more mess than I had of thought. So I am going to grab out the dust extractor and start using that so I'm not making as much dust. I've decided that I want to sand to a nice flat finish this beveled edge here. You'll see that there's quite a curved detail here in the edge of the top of this timber. 
Now I can hand sand in those grooves and use the orbital sander to sand the larger surfaces, but I actually think it's gonna make it a little bit more modern if I just use an 80 grit on my orbital sander and just sand that to a nice flat flush surface. In most instances, when I'm creating a piece of furniture that has timber on the top, I usually try and incorporate the timber somewhere else in the piece as well. Most likely that is going to be on this kickboard down the bottom, down the bottom of the piece of furniture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this kickboard as well. I'm going to use the same grit 80, then 120, then 240 to get this back to a raw surface as well. I'm now going to do a scuff sand over the entire piece. I use a different sander depending on where I'm doing it. I use the battery orbital if I want it to be light and easily maneuverable, or otherwise if I've already got out my big orbital sander, I will also use that for the scuff sand on a 120 grit. Once I'd finished the base of the tall boy, I moved on to the drawers. I removed all the hardware and the old handles and then grabbed out the orbital sander to give all of the front of the surface a scuff sand. I needed to use a piece of hand sandpaper to sand in these details on the sides. I had a little bit of trouble removing one of the screws from the drawer or the old handles. There was a little component of the screw that had gotten stuck inside the drawer and I needed to hammer that out. But when I did that, it's just chipped a little bit of the timber off and I needed to do a little bit of repair work there to fix that. I filled it in with some wood filler and I'm just going to sand off the excess wood filler. And then I'm going to deep clean all of the tall boy, the drawers, the insides and all of the base. And then I can start with the primer. I get a lot of questions about the cleaning process and I'm just gonna quickly break it down for you. This is a product that I use. It's called Triclinium and it's a degreaser that is a powder. Now it's very similar to sugar soap and what you do is you're going to mix the powder into water and then you're going to use that to clean the furniture. It's a really cheap way to do this if you're going to be doing this a lot like I do because you're going to get a lot of uses out of just one container of Triclinium and that costs around $20. But if you're buying some of the other TSP, TSP type alternatives, they can be really quite costly if they're already mixed up and you're using those to clean your furniture. This is a much cheaper way to be able to do a large quantity of furniture or large spaces with the degrees and not have to spend quite so much money. I just grab a handful of the crystals. You'll be able to see inside there that they're just like white flakes of crystals. So if I hold my hand out here and just show you that, it's basically just like a white crystallized powder. And I'm just going to mix that into the water and then I'm going to stir that around until all of that's dissolved in my water. Once that's all dissolved, I can start cleaning the furniture. I'll just wipe down with my cloth. If there's any spaces that I feel need to be scrubbed, I can use the scourer for that. Remember that the scourer will leave a lot more water on the space. So as I said before, if you're using a veneer or if your piece of furniture is something that can't have water beading on it like that, you need to quickly go back over it and remove all of that excess water and don't let that sit on the surface. I really want to create something unique with these drawers. The design of them is really quite plain. There's no elegance to them. There's nothing that really catches your eye when you look at them. They're really just a plain standard set of drawers. 
Now, in order to create a little bit of a wow factor or a little bit of elegance to them, I'm going to use a stencil design and some framing. What I'm going to do is apply the stencil design onto the drawers. So I'm going to apply a raised stencil here with this stencil and I'm going to use mud to be able to lift that and create a raised stencil design. Then I'm going to use this edging and create a frame for the stencil design and use that to go around this stencil. It's going to look really amazing. The two single drawers will just have one frame and then the other drawers are going to have two frames side by side with this stencil. So it's gonna have like two boxes and there's going to be the two drawers that have got the two boxes. And basically all up, we're going to end up with 10 boxes going down this chest of drawers and it's gonna look really cool. I haven't done this design before, so I'm just as interested as you guys to see how it turns out. This particular product starts to lighten in color as it starts to dry. So this is a really good way I can show you where it's starting to dry. You'll be able to see here that this is a lot lighter in color and here and here is even darker. This one has just been recently done. Then this one was the next one away. And then that was the first one that I did. And it is now starting to dry and lighten in color. So it will be quite a fair bit lighter in color once it has all dried. I've got everything kind of laid out all over the garage, but I've got the two boxed out drawers with a whole lot of weight sitting on top of them, just letting them dry for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to add a little bit of wood filler in them before I spray them. I've boxed out and framed the two little drawers, just the top two drawers. I've decided that I'm not going to frame out all of the drawers because there is a huge time commitment to it. And I just don't think if I'm going to be reselling this piece, I'm going to be able to recuperate the amount of time involved in flipping the piece and boxing out all of the drawers. Just to get all of those 45 degree angle cuts, it's really quite time consuming. So I'm just going to do the top two drawers and then have the raised stencil on the bottom four drawers. And I think it's all going to come together nicely having those top two drawers as a feature. I'm now going to just mask up the timber sections and put some glad wrap around those to stop them from getting paint on them because I'm going to spray paint on my primer and probably even spray paint on my paint. It'll just depend on which paint I select that I'm going to use but I will definitely spray on the primer so I'm going to mask up those areas and cover them.
The sun's going down on me here a little bit, but I'm hoping that I will be able to get the second coat of green paint onto all of the drawers and the base before the end of the day and before it gets dark. I'm using the Mint by Michelle Riverbank Green for this piece, a nice deep green. I'm going to be adding a little bit of a black wax highlight and then also adding some new hardware and staining the timber. And I'm really excited to see it all come together. It doesn't really take very long with the brush and roller to apply the second coat. It's probably only gonna take me about 20 minutes in real time. And then I'm just gonna speed that up and show you the process of painting the second coat on. I'm actually really liking how it's turning out with the green and the light colored timber. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, there is a burn mark on the top of the timber that I wasn't able to sand out. And so because it's going to be really obvious when I have it as a light color, I'm going to try and stain it a dark color just to blend this burn in. I can try and keep sanding it to see if I can get a little bit more of it out. But look, I have sanded quite a considerable amount of it. And I think the easiest thing to do is just going to be disguise that burn mark in with the timber stain. So I'm gonna stain this a really dark color and hopefully it turns out really nice because it does look nice with the light color and the green. And I haven't actually done a dark color with a green before, so let's see how it turns out. Thank you so much for watching the video on the transformation of this tall boy. I hope that you got some great information throughout the video that you can take away and implement yourself. This particular piece of furniture didn't turn out to be my favorite piece of furniture, but that is one of the things I love about refinishing furniture. We're all so different. We like different colors, different styles, and the piece that I don't necessarily like might turn out to be your favorite. So this one is not gonna go down in history as my favorite piece of furniture, but I'd love to know what you think in the comments. If you love the green, but wish I had kept the timber light a little bit like what I think I should have done, I do have a beautiful TV unit transformation that you can check out here that shows you what it looks like when you use green with a beautiful light timber. I'll see you in the next clip. Bye for now.